This is Tiger Cats post game on the Tiger Cats Audio Network. Oh, the ability to play in the postseason, that wish a little bit closer. But it was a nail biter, folks. Hamilton Tiger Cats pulling out a last second victory over the Ottawa Red Blacks, who were feisty tonight in a game truly affected by the weather. Hamilton 30. Ottawa 27, Bubba O'Neill, Andy Fantus, and a cast of characters coming up a little bit later in the broadcast. But let's talk about this big victory for the Hamilton Tiger Cats, Andy Fantus. I'm telling you, I, I'm going to call this an emotional roller coaster because this one had its ups and its downs. It was physical. There were injuries. There were uh, some pushing and shoving matches. But at the end of the day, it came down to special teams. That was a very impressive win, in my opinion, and I'll tell you why. They got out, turn, the, the turnover ratio was yes. four to one in Ottawa's favor, and Hamilton still found a way to dig deep and show some grit against the win in the fourth quarter and really turn that game around. It was, honestly, it was looking a little bleak halfway through the third quarter. They were down by eight at half. They come out with the win, can't really move the ball, and it's just kind of a stalemate, and you're thinking you're going to go into the fourth quarter down by, you know, down by a score against the win. Not looking good against a, an Ottawa team that, that, like you said, is playing very physical and creating turnovers. But they found a way to dig deep and really completely shut down the run in the second half. Turn around that second down conversion ratio from two and two for ten in the first half to six for twelve in the second half. So sustain some drives. They had the rush game going pretty much all game long, 177 total rush yards, 104 of those by Sean Thomas Erlington. They, they, they had a lot more net yards in Ottawa, 424 to 217. But to me, the, the, the main reason that's so impressive is just that, that grit and determination to, to just buckle down and, and get the job done. You mentioned special teams. Seth Small missed that field goal early in this game, then went on to make five straight field goals including the game winner against the win with no time on the clock. Just an outstanding rebound from an early, you know, an early diversity in the game. Well, they outscored the Red Blacks 17 to three in the second, seven th uh, to six, pardon me, 17 to six in the second half. And that certainly was a major factor. What teams did with the wind apparently seemed to be a big factor as well too. Folks here on the Tiger Cats post game show, we will review Andy's car star keys to the victory, uh, exclusive access to the coaching room and the locker room. So we will coach, uh, talk to Coach O. Hopefully, we will talk to Seth Small. We will present our performer of the game. Uh, and, of course, uh, we will go four wide with the likes of Courtney Steven and Luke Tasker. They will come and join us, and we will complete the conversation about what was an exciting win. Uh, Andy, let's announce our performer of the game because I think there were some guys that stepped up with individual performances especially on defense in my opinion but I think as I said special teams really stepped it up in a game where it didn't look like it was going to be a, an easy day for the kickers no it, it certainly didn't and, and we'll just off the top we're just going to say Seth Small is our player of the game after that first miss to make five straight field goals both against and with the win uh, he, you know he's been deserving of this <laughs> sort of crown for weeks now and and uh but there's been other players with unbelievable individual performances and and, and and it's fair to say he's five of six but the miss was from 53 yeah like that, that's not a guarantee on even a good day and it was close too it was close and uh so he's our player of the game but you mentioned you know some other players that honorable mentions micah johnson comes in oh beast. fresh off fresh off a, a, a newborn baby and comes in with with two sacks three tackles just causing havoc in the middle and really after a couple early runs by the Ottawa Red Blacks by Jackson Bennett in the in the first half they were just it was non-existent from then on all game long and uh, so he was a big part of that and uh, you look at Sean Thomas Erlington 13 carries for 104 including a couple of explosive runs and, and, he, and he comes in to replace Don Jackson, who was forced to leave the game with a hand injury. Yeah, Don Jackson left with a hand injury. Dane Evans left with a hand injury. Pray, you know, knock on wood that they're both going to be okay for next week and beyond. Um, but Don Jackson was running the ball well, too. I mean, he had 27 yards on five carries. So 
just a, just an impressive way to win a game going down into you know winter weather fall weather going into the playoff stretch to be able to run the ball for the third consecutive week to be able to make stops on defense when it matters the most and to make your kicks uh, that's a winning formula and to have an average yards per play of 7.1 yards wow. per play versus a 4.8 I mean when you're looking at this game today I'm thinking and I think a lot of people in the stadium are thinking, well, you know, what's going on with this team? What, what's going on? But, yeah. but really, they're putting up numbers. It was just those those turnovers that were looking bleak. And then, of course, that Cedric Wilson strip sack. Uh, the the was, Wilcox, yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, it's Wilcox, excuse me. Amazing, that was, that amazing, was an incredible amazing play. takeaway. Incredible, incredible play. So STE, honorable mention. Michael Johnson, honorable mention. Tim White, another solid game. Seven receptions, 113 yards. Wow. He is. Uh, he quietly put up some numbers today. Um, we talked about ball distribution. That was, that was excellent. It, it, it got it got better. This like what a what a turnaround in the second half. That's all I gotta say. I, I thought they were gonna have the win in the fourth. I made a mistake. They they didn't win the the coin, the coin toss. So Ottawa had, did have the choice. Uh, but they you know even after a slow thir thir start of the third quarter, they were able to turn it around. Let's review your uh, car star three keys to victory. Yeah, sure. Why not? It's uh, so ball distribution was number one, and you have seven different receivers with at least at least two targets, and you have five different rushers. Uh, I would say that's ball distribution. Oh yeah, that's twelve people touching the ball for production and offense and uh, making a difference. So that's a big check mark. I was I really really happy to see that. Uh, it and you know, that doesn't even count. Uh, that doesn't even count some of the targets that were incomplete. So, so a good job by by uh, Dane Evans, Matthew Schultz, and uh, and Tommy Condell and getting everybody involved. Number two, number two is contain Justin Hardy, and I, I'll give this one a check mark too because he he had five targets for five catches, only 34 yards. He really wasn't that the guy uh, which I expected him to be. He, he got a little more love in the second half, a little more looks. But it was uh, it was the newcomer Harris that really was stealing the show for the for the uh, Red Blacks, especially in that first half. He had 11 targets, seven receptions in the game uh, for 62 yards. Uh, but the, the you know the, the halftime adjustments were incredible. So check mark for uh, containing Hardy. And number three, I know you've kind of touched on it, but it's bizarre. Yeah, you don't see this a lot, especially in October and November football at the CFL, where you can lose the turnover battle by three and still come out on top. And just goes to show the, the amount of grit and determination and uh, and re focus and refocus that it took to win this game. And you, you got to you just you got to look at that 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 special teams, you got to look at the rushing game uh, and just the total output and and the, the adjustments at second half to shut the Red Blacks down defensively. I think it was Marv Levy that actually spoke and it was about 81% of the time and I know this is a different league, but I think it's still pretty transferable. 81% of the time that you win the turnover battle, you will win a football game. And somehow the Tiger Cats blew that stat right up. It, Amazing. It's, yeah, it's so wild. Because, again, you're looking at this game, like, thinking Ottawa's maybe the better team. They're physical. They're creating turnovers. They're making some big plays. They were plays. confident. They're getting touchdowns. Yes. Where Hamilton's settling for field goals. But... You know, game's a long, you know, 60 minutes, and it's 60 minutes for a reason. Hamilton only had four punts in the game versus Ottawa's nine. Wow. That's a big difference right there. So it's just, just a lot of credit. I, I really, really can appreciate the way they won this game. Just like the last two games that they won, they, it was different than any other game so far this season, uh, and which bodes well for some lessons, some learning, some growth going into the playoffs. Let's go round table style. We're bringing in Courtney Steven and Luke Tasker. Uh, somehow has found himself from the seventh floor of the Tim Hortons facility <laughs> here. I don't know how you made it out alive because uh, I, I, you have nails left. I don't know if you yeah. bite your nails. Oh, I, I had like to I, sneak down the back hallway. <laughs> Trust me. Yeah, it's like, a mess out there. I'm telling you, they're a great crowd, unbelievable atmosphere, sold out crowd, and um, for the final game, Luke, of the season. For the fans to go home with that, you know, they came here with the expectation of a Tiger Cats win. And, and as I call this an emotional roller coaster, there were many times where you had to be thinking, I think you might have even said it at some point in the broadcast, 
Oh, there they are. The old Thai Cats are back. Yeah, and you know, the Red Blacks came in here expecting a Red Black win. I mean, they played hard from start to finish. They were, they. I mean, I think it seemed to me, and it's hard to measure something like this, it seemed to me like one of the most physical teams we've seen come into Tim Hortons Field. Just unbelievable. The special teams tackles were, were punishing, every one of them. I mean, Lawrence Woods need, is going to need an ice bath. You know, I mean, it was really, really a physical team all around. But you got, I mean, that negative three turnover ratio you're, you guys are talking about, amazing that the team and as a whole team over, overcame that. But it comes down to the defense and what they did after the turnovers were forced. You think back to the first, first plays of the game, Dane Evans gets the ball knocked out of his hands, and it's only a few plays later that the Red Blacks are punting, you know, deep into Ticat territory because of the wind, and they have to punt from that. The defense covered over a, a multitude of errors from, from the Ticat offense, and then uh, when they needed to, the offense came through, and Seth Small came through, and they made it happen. Just really impressive. Courtney, on game day, on game day, you were talking about this with Mike Daly, that there could be people brought out in body bags. <laughs> and and to Luke's point, this was a physical, physical contest. Um, and I'm not so much talking about the, the pushing and shoving matches. Well, they, they were really smacking each other today. And that's good old-fashioned fall, autumn football. When the world is colder, the people get colder. I mean, <laughs> you, you, you want that, though, because you can tell what's on the line. Both of these teams understand fully that you have to win to get to the playoffs. Ultimately, nothing mattered uh, what happened before this because they had an opportunity. And capitalizing on that opportunity was the main thing that both teams came to do today. And, you know, you got to give your hats off to, to Ottawa because they went out valiantly. They were fighting. With seconds remaining, they had a chance. And so um, it was a great game for the fans. And also, you want a tough game going into the playoffs if you do end up making it there because you're going to be primed and ready to give your best you don't want to walk in you want to go in on a high note court how, how proud of you if you're a defensive player you're down by eight at halftime the ottawa red blacks had eight drives in the second half and i'm going to read out the yards of each the net yards of each of those drives negative two seven negative nine negative six thirty zero and fifteen. Oh my goodness like what more can you say? What more could you ask for for halftime adjustments? And, and you know what? I would love to be a fly on the wall in that locker room at halftime because I don't think it was a circle the wagons, we got to pull up. No, it was, guys, let's settle in. Let's do our thing. And when the offense needs us, let's just answer the bell. And they answered the bell valiantly. It was exactly what you need when there's a sudden change, if there's a turnover, if there was a bad field position. No one complains. They pick up their bucket, they run out there, they put the fire out, and they absolutely did that today. You know, Luke, I, I'll tell you, and I can't stop thinking about it. I, I need to go look at it again because I, when it happened, my mouth dropped. Uh, what can be said about Cedric Wilcox II comes up with that strip play, a backup defensive end, just in a rotation, He's not regular, and he comes up with probably was the play of the game other than the winning field goal. And you know what? Arbuckle had that happen twice last week against Montreal, one for a touchdown. And he stepped up in the pocket, and the ball was too low, and it got out. And when we're, when we're game planning watching a team, you watch cut-ups of different field positions, of different uh, offensive formations and the defense against them, but you watch their last game, you know? And that, you see that happen twice, and you think, you, as a, you're watching your direct opposition, the defensive line is watching the offensive line, and you're seeing that quarterback, you're getting, you see that, and it, and it whets your appetite to do that again and to strip that out. And he went in, and he was, he was ready for that. And, and uh, the, the teams that win at, at this time in the year, they make those kinds of plays, like that strip sack in the backfield, at times in the game when their team desperately needs it from them. You get Lawrence Woods getting returns when it, in Calgary last week when his team desperately needs it to win the game. This team is this team is rising to the occasion, albeit with some injuries or excuse me with some mistakes throughout the game. But they're rising to the occasion at, at, at very crucial moments. We have exclusive access to the coaching room. Time to check in with head coach and president coach Orlando Steinauer. We are presented by Access Storage, Coach. He had a sold-out crowd 
that came here hoping for a Tiger Cats victory, knowing what was on the line. And even though there were some ups and downs, you guys delivered. Yeah, we found a way to win and uh, just couldn't be more proud. The what didn't didn't go how we envisioned it or how we planned it, but the plan we did plan to win. And so we did do that. Um, yeah, it, just just extremely proud and happy. Coach, with their backs to the wall, Ottawa goes into the halftime up eight points. And what was said in, in the locker room and, and to totally change the dynamic of the second half when it comes to defensive yardage allowed, uh, second down conversions, just just speak to like the, what happened at halftime and and, and, uh, and then in, into the second half. Well, I just looked half. I just... We, we, I just told them they'd be upset with themselves when they look at the tape, right? We're, we're leaving too many plays on the field, and we were hurting ourselves. I didn't think we hurt ourselves penalty-wise in the first half, but, uh, you know, we did, did a decent job of keeping us in the game, but we didn't take the ball away, and obviously we turned it over. So um, we knew that it was going to come down to a win game. You know, Ottawa, credit them. They gave us the ball in the win, and we didn't do much with it in the third quarter uh, until, you know, the very end of it. And then, of course, uh, we moved into the wind uh, when it counted at the end. A uh, great run by Matt. And then, uh, you know, obviously another clutch second down conversion there. So the, the emphasis to, at half was like, let, let's play our game and see what happens. Coach, you, Wes Hills is out of the lineup. Don Jackson comes in. Don Jackson's out of the lineup. And Sean Thomas Erlington really seemed to me like he outperformed what you could have expected from him. Maybe not, a, maybe you know, in a position to not get as many carries as he did, and then Dane ends up out, and Matt Schiltz comes in. What is it about your team? What can you say about those guys filling roles and and and, and answering the call when an injury strike? Well, I don't want to discredit them, but to say that I'm surprised the way Erlington responded or the way Matt Schiltz responded, I'd be I'd be lying to you. I'm not surprised at all. With that being said. You know, those are tough things to fill, and I just think it's a, tri a tribute to them to be an ultimate team leader. One of them starters every week when they go in, they know that, but uh, they still stay ready. And I mean that in the most sincere way. They do. They prepare like they're going to play, and I know that their teammates trust them just, just, like, a, just like a starter. Um, I just can't say enough about that. And there's so many other people that, that filled in and made big plays tonight that, that weren't starters. Coach, you've been finding a, a ton of different ways to win across these last few games. Um, but Seth Small, as kicking five field goals tonight, he's a huge impact in this one. What kind of confidence does having somebody like that on the sideline that you can call on? What does that do for you and, uh, as you're going through close games like this one? Well, it, it does a lot for, for the team. You know, uh, We knew that Seth was outstanding in training camp. We just made a decision to go. Uh, non-import Canadian, whatever you want to say at that position early in the year. And it just wasn't working. Well. We knew that we were struggling early in the year, scoring points. And so we felt like when we did drive the ball that we should come away with something or give ourselves a better opportunity. So the fact that when the offense uh, makes a drive and they can come away with points, um, it just helps. It helps uh, not deflate. Um, even, you know, it just helps keep the energy up. Two quick ones, Coach. Be honest with me. When he lined up for the 30-yarder for the win, were you confident? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I looked at Butts. I said he's the best in the league. You know, and, and let me ask you, obviously we've talked about the playoff situation, and I know that's it. at the beginning of the year, that's all you want to do is get yourself into the dance. Uh, will the team be getting together maybe tomorrow to watch that Saskatchewan-Calgary game? Any plans for the team? Not that it'll be organized by me or any of the coaches. What they do is what they do. Um, but uh, you know what? We work hard to control our own situation down the stretch. So regardless of what happens, uh, we still got to go out and handle business um, tomorrow. So we went out, then that's that. it doesn't matter. We don't have to watch any games. But to answer you directly, uh, everybody I'm sure will be watching it, but there's no organized event. Coach, I got to ask uh, quickly, any message for the fans? I t yeah, I just I said stay with us if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> I love it. If you, if you wouldn't mind, that'd be great. This, this is the last home game of the year. 
we wish that uh, we would be able to, you know, play in front of you guys one more time. But um, hopefully you'll see us again uh, coming down King or Main Street uh, when it really counts in the parade. <laughs> Coach, oh, you're fabulous. Enjoy the victory. Enjoy sleeping in your own bed tonight. That's going to be a good one tonight. So enjoy. I'll, I'll do that. All right, my friend. Thank you All so right, much guys. for joining. Thanks. We really Thanks, appreciate guys. your time. Hey, hey, yeah, yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Well, uh, that's a happy coach, guys. Yeah, that was, that, was, that was genuine. Well, it's easier to stick with them now. When they win <laughs> four or five games, you know, nobody's, nobody's falling off now. They, uh, it's, it's exciting. Well, I brought this up in the pregame show. I mean, this same Ottawa Red Blacks team won a Grey Cup. I mean, you guys are well aware of it because you guys had a little meeting with them. 2016, they finished the regular season. Eight wins, uh, nine losses, and one tie. Mm. Sub-500 team. Thai Cats could be in a similar situation with eight yeah. victories and maybe go on, uh, on on some type of wild playoff run. This is the Canadian Football is, League, and it's maybe not about the record there, Courtney. It could be all about how you're playing at this time. And, and you know what? That's what makes this game so beautiful is that on any given day, anyone can win. That's why they roll the ball out. Again, we, let's go right back down to the locker room and connect with Seth Small. He is our performer of the game, presented by Hercules Tire, right on our strength. And, of course, this exclusive post-game interview with Mr. Small is presented by Access Storage. Seth Small, congratulations. What a game for you. The conditions, I don't think you've ever kicked in these type of conditions at Tim Hortons <laughs> Field. Um, and, and you really came through and booting that uh, game winner. Boy, that's got to be a good feeling for you. Thank you so much for, for the kind words. I'm getting used. I'm trying to get used to the Hamilton wind. I've heard that's not out of the blue for it to be that windy. But, no, it was a great team win. And so thankful that we were put in that position. I obviously hope that we win uh, by a lot more than just a field goal. But uh, that's what we trained for. You know, me, Gordo, White, and Matt Schultz. And he stepped up at quarterback. And then Gordo had a great snap and great hold. And we just great block on the line. And we just put it through, try to do our jobs when we're called upon Seth, you uh, have a probably the best kick of your life. It's got to be, and it's a historic field goal: Texas A&M versus Alabama. Obviously, that might that was a legendary moment. But how does tonight's field goal and this win compare to that? I mean, any any time you get a you get a game-winning field goal, all, all glory to God. Uh, you know, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I mean, we can we can train as hard as we want to, but. Uh, it's ultimately God that gives us uh, the grace to go out and, and win. And it's just a hard-earned win and uh, very thankful for it. But I definitely put this up there with that that Alabama uh, game-winning, very special moment Anytime I get to hit a game-winning field goal. That's great, man. Seth, I love how you're uh, giving the holders and the snappers a little bit of credit. Uh, we have a couple <laughs> holders here on the panel. <laughs> if, <laughs> Doesn't happen very often. <laughs> let, let me tell you, if you're only hearing that I'm giving them a little bit of credit, you're not hearing me because they deserve a lot more credit than, <laughs> than what most people give them. I can't do my job without Gordo and Matt, and they, they're just tremendous at what they do. My man, my man. Uh, T t can you talk about your experience here in Hamilton uh, this season coming in to, to training? You were late to training camp, um, you know, didn't quite make this, the roster at the start. And then, of course, the season with the up and ups and downs, lots of downs for the team in general. And then to get on a little bit of a run here. Just what's your experience been here in the CFL and in Hamilton in particular? This journey has been has been quite the journey. Um, I came up here uh, three days before the first preseason game. I had to Google, uh, watch a YouTube video over the CFL rules because I literally knew nothing about the CFL. And, uh, you know, I was just welcomed into the team. Michael Damagala's great teammate was explaining everything to me in the CFL, and he's definitely helped with that learning curve of the game. At the end of the day, it just comes down to, like, putting the ball to the uprights. But uh, I've had great teammates, great coaches around me. Coach Butler has just been phenomenal as a special teams coach. He really he really treats the players as people first and then players second. So that's really sweet. Um, but, I mean, it's been crazy. I got sent home after preseason. Um, it was just a ratio thing, which I understood. And they told me to stay ready. And I was looking into some jobs in Houston. And then uh, five weeks later, I get a call. And they say, hey, we want you out here. And I had been staying ready. So they kind of just plugged me in and... Uh, I feel like Hamilton's kind of got hot recently, uh, late in the season, and uh, we've just been we've just been riding the wave, uh, trying to prepare, do the little things, and Coach O has led us in that direction, 
uh, this season. And we found some success here late, and we're going to push a run for the Great Cup. We're really excited about that. Hey, Seth, the game-winning field goal there. I was half expecting in the booth that that Coach O and, and, and Craig Butler were going to call for the single to be punted out of the end zone. Did you have any say? Did they ask you if, if, the, if, you, had, if you had the leg uh, to make the field goal, or were you sent out to do your job? No, they, they just sent me out. They said they called field goal. To be honest, I wasn't even thinking about the, the rouge. That's not on the forefront of my Good mind. Good words. You know, whenever, <laughs> Great words. Whenever, whenever, uh, whenever they call upon me to do my job, I try to do it every time I go out there. And uh, Yeah, just really, really sweet win here at home for our last home game of the season. Last quick question for you there, Seth. When you missed from 53, what were oh you thinking? God. Were you thinking, and it was a close one, were you thinking this is going to be one of those days or, oh, my goodness, the wind? or like, What were you thinking? No, ab- absolutely not. You know, you if you ever uh, played golf, you know, you allow yourself one breakfast ball. Uh, not that I try to allow myself <laughs> a breakfast ball in the game. I love it. But, uh, no, I feel I felt good. Great hold, great snap. I just uh, pulled it a little bit and wish I had that one back so we wouldn't need the one uh, at the end of the game. But, uh, you know, you just you have a short term memory as a kicker. So um, I wish my golf game was better. Uh, I wish my (laughs) golf game was like that. But, yeah, you just try to go out there and do your job the next time that you're called upon. Seth Small, outstanding job. Five for six field goal kicking tonight including the game winner from 30 yards away. Enjoy the victory, and thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. Cheers, and God bless. You know, we kickers sometimes get a stigma, right? Guy, yeah, yeah they're, they're, <laughs> that they're just a, a kicker, right? But, boy, they're, they, what, especially in the Canadian game, Luke, their con- yeah. contributions are massive. Oh, yeah, and I just, the, the, the first punt uh, for Michael Domagall tonight was an 87-yard, excuse me, 83-yard net punt. I mean, it's game changing, you know, and that and that and then, you know, you combine that with the with the singles and the field goals. And and I, that brings me back to Ottawa played an impressive special teams game uh, tonight. And their their kickers, Ward and Leone, also had an impact on the game. But uh, it's special to the league. And, and, and for some reason or well, a lot due to weather, the impact of kickers and punters in the league increases as you approach and enter playoffs. What a fine, though have Seth Small in leading Incredible. the league in field goal percentage going into the playoffs. What an asset that is. This was such a problem for this team, this field goal kicking and the punting. It was a major issue last year and maybe caused a couple of victories for this team. And as with this, the, the season started out, I was wondering if we were going down the same road because if, at training camp for you guys that were here, and I know you were all, I mean, there was about seven or eight guys they brought in. Right, yeah. and and then they kind of went back with what they left off with, and we were like, "What? What happened? Where is? Can we they not find a consistent field goal kicker? Well, well, they got one now. Well, and that's one of the most dangerous weapons that you can have, especially when you're playing basically ball control offense. Don't mess it up. You know, move the ball, but we're not scoring a ton of touchdowns on offense. So you need, like Coach O said, you need to come away with points as often as you can, and possessions are tough to come by when the defense like Andy listed out those drives they were having a hard time on Ottawa moving the ball and that's how you can change field position and maybe you don't score a touchdown but you get away with at least three and those threes add up tonight you see the consequence of that that's a W for for the team with the weapon Courtney right back at you and I, I can't remember if we brought this up here but I it, it really does worth uh, come up worth repeating uh, the old man in the middle you stirring it up like, Mika Johnson is an animal. And and he's been doing it for many years. But the thing is, uh, he took a week off last week and came back hot. A lot of guys... He left hot, too. Well, that's the thing. But taking the break, you could go either way, right? And so for him to have the ability to come in and get two sacks, really... Also, the thing that we don't see a lot of the time, because it doesn't necessarily register in the stat sheet, is that defensive linemen disrupt things. So mm-hmm. maybe they're blocking the quarterback's vision with their hands or maybe they're uh you know just making them feel their presence and so the delivery isn't as crisp as it is in seven on seven or walk through and and those things have an impact on how the receivers got to catch the ball and all it trickles down so micah johnson that's where it starts but then you see that reflected in the yardage that the other team can get in the receiver's confidence with the ball coming in and, and it trickles down so he had a great game we're running low on time, and I'm gonna, I want all of you guys to answer this question because you guys have all been here, and I think this is the fun part. 
and I asked Coach O the question. In this situation, you've done your, your job is done. You needed to win this game, but now to make the postseason, you need a little help. What are you doing tomorrow to watch that game? Are you getting together with some <laughs> of the boys? Andy, I'm starting with you. Well, I just off the top, I want to <laughs> just your comment. You need a little bit of help. I would be putting this on. We control it now. Yeah. Really, it doesn't matter what happens tomorrow. We can go out and take care of business next week. It's it's on us. We don't need anything. We just okay. need us. But, of course, I'm going to be watching that game. It, it depends what point of my career I'm in. <laughs> um, yeah, like, you, you're gonna play, you gonna you don't play till next Saturday. I would probably be uh, trying to holler at a few of the boys and, and just getting together and, uh, and, and uh, enjoying it and, and watch and just, just celebrating some camaraderie. We'd have been at Andy's house, actually. Literally. Honestly, <laughs> right? Exactly We'd have been at Andy's house to watch it. I remember... I remember uh, showing on this big screen at Tim Hortons Field, our team beating Montreal, showing Toronto Argonaut players at a restaurant hanging their heads because we were knocking them out of the playoffs. There's all kinds of interesting storylines as we get into week 21 of this year. But, yeah, it's great because you're right, Andy. It's in it's in the Ticats' hands. Tiger Cats 30, Ottawa Red Blacks 27. Thank you for listening. For Andy Fantuz and the many hands that put this broadcast together, Courtney Steven, along with Luke Tasker, Runjan Rupel. Thank you for joining us. This has been a fun one. The home crowd go home happy. And we're going to Ottawa, folks. It's Tiger Cats pregame presented by Journey Rewards starting at 4 o'clock next Saturday afternoon. Catch us. We appreciate you listening, and we're always for you here on the Ticats Audio Network.